There's no doubt that investing in the stock market can be risky. However, with the smart investment plan that I'm going to teach you today, you can mitigate those risks and retire early with no fear. But the least risky strategy for investing is investing in yourself by liking and subscribing to this channel. Time is money and I don't plan on wasting yours. So let's get straight into the video. One of the biggest things that people worry about with investing in the stock market is they think it's like gambling. And just like gambling, they think that they can lose all their money in an instant. But this isn't true. And you might be asking why. And that's a great question. While investing and gambling both are the same principle, taking some capital, taking some risk, and hoping that you get some reward from that. However, the biggest difference is that gambling is a zero sum game. What this means is that if you lose, you lose all your money. Investing in the stock market is different because you have more chances to mitigate your losses. For example, if you invest in a stock and the price of that stock slowly goes down over time, at each point you can exit your position. For example, if the stock price drops down 20%, you can exit the stock and you only lose 20% of your money, not the full amount. Another important point is that investors have more information than gamblers do. There is so much data out there on different companies and the economy, including different standardized ratios, which help compare different companies. I've spoken about these before in another video. Last and most importantly, over time, the odds will be in your favor as an investor and not in your favor as a gambler. However, it would be naive to say that investing doesn't come with risk. And so what if I told you that there was a way to lower your risk, but you lower your reward, which with the right investment plan can help you retire early with no fear or stress. Well, today I'm gonna to teach you it. But first, let's begin by breaking down the different risks between single asset risk and market risks. This will help you understand the risk profile of individual stock picking and diversification so you can make the right investment decision. A single asset risk is a higher risk but higher return investment. And this is because you're putting all your money into one singular asset, such as a company. If your company goes bankrupt, your money is gone skis. And this is probably the biggest fear amongst potential investors. So how do you avoid it? Diversification. When you invest in stocks, you're owning a part of a company. That includes its customers, employees, assets, goods, and services. If you invest in thousands of large companies in dozens of different countries, you can almost guarantee that you'll never lose all your money. You might be asking why or how? Because all of the companies in the world won't ever go bankrupt. The world needs these companies so you can get your basic essentials like milk, electricity, computers, cars, and everything else in your life. Now you might be saying, yeah, but the stock market's always going up and down. It's so scary. And you're right. With a diversified portfolio of stocks, there is still the market risk where the market will move up and down over time. But don't worry, I'm gonna explain this to you and how you can get around it. So on average, every single year, it's normal for the stock market to decline about 5% at some point. Every three to six years, it's normal for the stock market to decline about 20% at some point in that period. On average, every 10 to 20 years, it's normal for the stock market to decline about 30 to 50% at some point in that time period. This is the nature of the stock market because you're taking a little bit of risk to get a higher return than you would a bank account. What's really important here is that you don't panic and sell all your shares when it starts declining. The stock market has returned a compound average interest of around 10%, not including taxes, for the last 100 years. But you need to earn that return. And you do that by not panic selling when the media tells you the huge Great Depression is coming. Sell all your stocks, panic, 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 panic. That's because the market will recover at some point. And the more globally diverse your portfolio is across all sectors and all markets, the more protected you are against shocks in the economy. This is because the whole world cannot collapse. And often different countries have different experiences and bounce backs to an economic shocks. However, I need to stress that recoveries aren't always instantaneous and sometimes they take time. This is why when you invest in the stock market, you have to be emotionally and financially ready for it to be a long-term investment. You should only invest with money that you're happy to leave aside for about five to seven years. This is so when you have those freakish events where the market drops 50%, you can leave your money aside so it can recover. This is the way that you earn that 10% compounding interest. Now, you're probably thinking, how am I supposed to know if I can leave my money invested for seven years? What if the market crashes after six years, but I need that money in the seventh year? And all of those are genuine concerns. But don't worry, I've got a solution. If you're investing in the stock market with diversification, it should be to create a passive investment vehicle. And you should never withdraw your entire stock portfolio at one given time. You can, however, 
withdraw about 3 to 5% of your total portfolio every single year and live off that. This means that if the stock market falls, you'll only ever need to access a small portion of your assets. You can leave most of your assets still in the stock market and they'll recover. Now, if you're worried and you still think this is too risky, don't worry, I've got another solution for you. Diversification into bonds. To minimize your risk even further, you should diverse your portfolio further than just stocks. And by this, I mean putting your money into bonds so that you can draw on it when the stock market declines. This will allow for your stocks to recover while you just draw on the bonds. Okay, now that you've got all the essential information, I'm gonna tell you that stress-free investing plan so that you can retire early with the lowest risk. To make sure it's the lowest risk portfolio possible, we're gonna invest in thousands of stocks across different countries. This will make up about 60% of our portfolio. Then you're going to have about 40% of your portfolio in really safe assets like bonds. Each year, you withdraw about 4% of your portfolio and adjust the amount each year in line with inflation. We expect stocks to rise as they have done historically. When they do, we can withdraw from that portfolio because they've earned the returns that we expected. So far, so good. When the stock market eventually decreases in value due to the nature of the market, we're not going to panic sell because we're financially and emotionally prepared for this. But when this happens, we're going to withdraw from the bonds section of our portfolio to allow your stocks to recover and continually invest themselves. If you have 40% of your portfolio in bonds, you should be able to survive for about 10 years. As we've spoken about today, market drops happen every five to seven years, but after seven years, they recover. So if you have 10 years worth of money in your bonds account, you're set. This should be a perfect risk mitigation strategy to allow for your stocks to recover. And that's it. That's the simple investing plan. So from today's video, you should have learned that for each way of picking stocks or investing in the stock market, there's a different risk to reward ratio. Picking individual stocks have a higher risk to higher reward. Adding more stocks or using ETFs will lower your risk, but lower your reward. And then adding broader diversification into bonds again lowers your risk and lowers your reward even more. And doing all of those together is the safest way to retire early without any fear or stress. But of course, investing is up to you. And you've got to decide what risk to reward ratio do you want? For me, most of my portfolio is actually in individual stocks and then I have some in ETFs. That's because while I'm younger, I wanna take more risk to get a greater reward. I haven't diversified into bonds yet, but I definitely plan on doing so when I get older. If you wanna learn more about passive investing apps, you don't have to worry about investing into the stock market, check out my video up top. I've also spoken about dollar cost averaging, which is a strategy that helps reduce your risk and your reward. Another video up top here too. I plan on making videos about how I pick stocks. As always, make sure you do your own research because I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my opinion and what I plan on doing in the future. So as always, thanks so much for watching. And next step, invest into your investment plan. And make sure you check out more videos here or here or here. And I'll see you again soon.